that all is well in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And yet we have all of these other experts out here in the independent media who are saying quite the contrary, and they're waving the red flags. And again, over at Investment Watch blog, where they're asking the question, is a collapse inevitable? And the answer has to be yes. Pyramid schemes always collapse. Jim Willie and Gerald Salende are saying that the U.S. has already entered a Weimar phase where the inflation is just going to go completely out of control until we're basically in the same situation as Zimbabwe, where they're printing up banknotes worth $100 trillion that are going to be absolutely completely worthless, and the only international demand for those notes will be as curios. Ooh, look at the U.S., $100 trillion U.S. note. And they're forecasting that when gold finally breaks free of its repression and starts to go up, people are going to desert the Ponzi scheme very rapidly. And this puts our large central banks, the private central banks, in a bit of a bind because every time gold prices are driven down, and they're using these paper gold contracts to do it, they're overselling paper gold contracts. And when they come due, they try and uh, buy them out for cash plus a premium. And if they can't do that, they lease gold from the private central banks. Now the private central banks don't have all the gold they're supposed to. So every time the prices go down, they're buying gold. When they start buying gold, the price goes back up again. So they're really between a rock and a hard place. And I'm sure even now, they're discussing the only realistic solution to save the banking system is another gold confiscation from the American people. And we're seeing more and more states are starting to say, if you are buying gold or silver, you must have a record with the government. Illinois is now talking about doing that. If you're buying gold coins or gold bars, the state wants to know that you have them so they know which doors to knock on. Now, we're seeing record stock market prices, but there are other records you need to pay attention to. Record gas prices, record grocery prices. The markets are ignoring a 13-year high in French unemployment. They're ignoring uh, uh, plummeting German factory orders. It's just, it's unprecedented. The manipulation of the markets and the willful blindness of the uh, Wall Street money junkies and their lackeys in Washington, D.C., they can't do anything about it, so they don't want to see it. They're basically acting just like New York Mayor Bloomberg, who's got at 50,000 homeless in his city, but he's spending all his time worrying about uh, earphone buds and what size sodas you can buy with your pizzas. Now, over at ECRI, they're basically saying that, according to their numbers, the U.S. went back into recession the middle of last year. And the corporate media didn't want you to know that either. And we're seeing all of this dramatic volatility all over the economy. Not just the stock market. The volatility has been going up, and that's also a warning sign. It's a sign of massive churning, of rapid buying and selling, trying to gain just the last few pennies out of the system here. Apparently over at the Daily Voice... Their chairman promised good news on a Friday, and then the following Monday had to announce they were laying off employees. That's because everybody's finances are tied in with everybody else's. And when somebody on uh, the West Coast sneezes, New York catches the cold. And when you apply that to a planetary scale, this is the largest single argument against economic globalism I can think of. And the, the classic example of that, of course, was the implosion of the mortgage-backed security fraud in 2008 because of economic globalism. A calamity in the United States became a catastrophe pretty much all over the world. It, it really was what triggered the European downfall. And they still can't clean up that mess, even with all the instantly printed money, because the people who bought those fraudulent mortgage-backed security bundles, they want their refund in dollars as they were valued in 2008, not 2013. 